Hey guys and welcome back to Tech Genie. Today I'm really excited to bring you guys a brand new video running through everything you guys need to know about the new MacBook Pro before you go ahead and buy it. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video because it might reveal something crucial to you before you go out and buy one of these laptops. Now I would like to say before I jump straight into today's video, make sure you go ahead and check out our second channel. The link will be down below and up here on the screen so you guys can go ahead and check it out. It's a news channel, watch the channel trailer on a couple of videos and of course if you like the stuff make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Okay so jumping straight into to the video you might know already but the trackpad has been pretty much doubled in size it's absolutely colossal which means you can get a wider range of movements those multi gestures are much easier to use on this new trackpad and now the new trackpad doesn't have that mechanical click anymore it's got the new haptic engine at the bottom which gives you that simulated click a lot like the old macbook so the next thing i need to talk to you guys about is the keyboard now if you don't know already it's been replaced with a kind of faster quick type butterfly keyboard that is on the macbook so if you like the mechanical keyboards then you're not going to like this one but it's going to take a little bit of getting used to but it is an awful lot faster i found that it took a bit of getting used to once i had got used to it it was so much faster to type through all these massive word documents so if that is a thing that you're really interested in typing faster it may be a good thing in the end Okay, so then the next thing is the screen, and oh my god, the screen is incredible. So people have measured it as having about 99.9% .9 sRGB color gamut, which of course is a huge amount more color showing on the screen. And then they measured it at about 450 nits of brightness, so it's a much brighter screen than before. I would be really intrigued to see how that affects the battery life, but people have been saying they've been getting 9 hours of battery life easily out of this laptop. So that's really quite incredible that they've managed to achieve this out of this laptop. Now, of course, the base version of the MacBook Pro comes in with two USB Type-C ports, and then the 15 inch model has got the four USB type C ports so you are gonna have to get used to those adapters I feel like I'm saying this in every one of Apple's videos but it's very true you are gonna have to get used to these adapters okay so then the base model of the MacBook Pro comes in with a 3.1 gigahertz Intel i5 core it means it's very fast at kind of doing normal day-to-day -day stuff you can edit really high quality HD videos on it no problem but you will find when you start trying to export it and render it compared to a lot higher Kind of faster computers and laptops it's not going to perform very well and it does definitely make a difference when you get to the stage of rendering things out especially when you're comparing it with a really kind of high-end fast device which is a little bit annoying because the macbook pro is supposed to be the pro version and that's kind of what you want from it but it doesn't really perform super well in that kind of area Okay, and then finally I want to talk about the new touch bar. You guys have probably known about this already, but this is only on the two versions of the MacBook Pro. So as you know, they've released three, they've released two 13 inches and one 15 inch. So it's only on the 13 inch and the 15 inch. So the new touch bar is, I personally think, really kind of a little bit of gimmick, but really quite cool. You can do lots of cool stuff and lots of app developers are gonna really design it to make sure it uses perfectly for their app. And we will really be interested to see what people have kind of come up with and what to use this for in terms of using it within their apps. Personally, I think it'd be really good to use within like things like Final Cut Pro and Photoshop, kind of having a little touch bar at the top, because I find I never use the function keys at the top. However, if you do like the function keys, you can still go ahead and buy the 13 inch model without the touch bar. Of course, that's probably why they kept it in there, so you guys do have that choice. So finally, just to sum everything up, I would say if you're going in to go and buy one of these, and you want to go and get the lower end 13 inch with a 3.1 gigahertz Intel i5 core chip inside, I probably wouldn't go for it because it's pretty much the same as last year's MacBook Pro and there's not much difference between the two of them but they both perform pretty much the same so if you're going to go for that I'd save yourself about £450 in some cases and go ahead and buy the old MacBook Pro but of course if you want the new 15 inch one with the new ports, USB Type-C, the new keyboard, the touch bar, the massive trackpad then of course I think you're not going to be disappointed whatsoever if you go ahead and buy one of these. So that's my opinion guys. Let us know what you think. Will you be really interested to go out and buy one of these? Personally, I think they're quite expensive, but I think they're really quite a nice computer. So that's it for today guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, turn on notifications, follow us over on Twitter, and that's pretty much everything guys. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, live long and prosper.